Hello and welcome back to another Marvel Champions live play. My music is really loud. I'm going to turn it down. Just in my headphones. Alrighty, yeah, so today we are coming in early because we have got the two newest hero packs for Marvel Champions. We have Spider-Ham and Spider or SPDR or however you are supposed to pronounce it. But I am super excited to dive into both of these. Both of them look really interesting. Spider-Ham looks absurdly strong, whereas SPDR looks really interesting and fun and potentially challenging because of some limitations that she has. But what we're going to do today is we're going to open up both of these. We are then going to play through the four Hero Spotlight games for Spider-Ham. And so, yeah, let's dive into it. I also am kind of curious what people think um, and which ones they like more. I think people are a little bit more excited about SPDR. And there was some reservations with like how she is going to play. But all the feedback that I have heard so far is really positive and really good and seeing that kind of her three hand size in hero form does not limit her too much and so that's really exciting to hear all righty i have the wrong playlist i'm gonna we're gonna go back to chill yeah chill okay we're going to start, we're going to open SPDR first or Spider first, and then we're going to open Spider-Ham that way that we have a little bit of continuity between the opening of Spider-Ham and then playing the games. But I do want to open both of them because there are some cards in Spider. She comes with a protection pre-con three hand size hero. Wow. I thought Hulk and Thor had it rough. That is true. She has a three hand size. She has a couple of built in mechanisms to get around that hand size. And that's why people don't think that she is as bad as the printed three hand size is. We will see on Monday. So on Monday again, or not again, on Monday, uh, I plan on doing the SPDR Hero Spotlight videos. And so Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, we will be running through four games with Spider. Okay. Yep, okay, so spider hand, or no, we're going SPDR. So she comes with a pre-con of protection, which is my favorite aspect. And so in that sense, I'm just really excited. We've got some, you know what? No, I'm gonna, <laughs> why, why talk about it before we open it, right? Okay, so we've got it open. We've got our little nice cutout here. We'll take this, but. SPDR hero pack with this sweet poster. I need to, does anyone have, let me know in the chat or if you're watching this on YouTube, let me know if you have come up with a creative like use for some of these posters, because I feel like they could be really cool in some sort of collage or something like that. But I just haven't, I just haven't put any time or energy into doing that. Poster art is the same as the hero art. Boring. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I promise I don't always have this much issues getting these open it's just whenever i'm on stream i for some reason have the hardest time opening these packs but there we go it's like i think i do it with a little bit more reckless abandon by myself because i'm like i don't know okay so spdr suit and penny so these this is kind of the whole gimmick or not gimmick but uh thing for for spdr just a warning though i need to leave in an hour for an online board game session with an extended family awesome well have a lot of fun with the board game session that sounds awesome that sounds awesome Alrighty, we'll try and go quick then <laughs> so spdr our penny has two hero cards where whenever you flip you flip both of them and it changes based on if you are in hero or in alter ego form so penny parker has a recovery of four and she has the psychogenic compatibility so set up put spdr suit into play inactive side up so here we go this is our inactive side and then as an alter ego action you can exhaust the spdr suit to draw two cards and so maddie one of the other things that's really kind of caught my eye when i first saw this is that penny in alter ego only has a hand size of four and so this is the smallest alter ego hand size we've ever seen, not to mention the hero hand size of three. She has a printed hit points of 14. And then whenever 
you have the SPDR suit. So return to base. So force interrupt when you flip to this side, flip SPDR to Penny Parker, detach Penny Parker from here, moving all counters from her and cards attached to this card. And then whenever you flip up into hero form, uh, you can exhaust an interface upgrade you control to generate that upgrade's printed cost. And so even though she has a hand size of three starting out, this she starts out with this permanent upgrade on the on the table, which is her suit, which is an interface you can exhaust this for a wild resource. So she has a built-in generator on the table. Suit up, uh, when you flip to this side, flip SPDR suit to its active side, attach this card. And so that's telling you to do the whole the flip back and forth so that you you won't ever have alter ego and hero on the same side so that's that's her thing and she's all about building around that so really interesting i it, like really really interesting and i've heard really good things but we'll see okay so we've got venom as her signature ally it's a four cost ally with a one one three stat line and Venom gets plus one thwart and plus one attack for each sim counter on her. Then after Venom enters play, place one sim counter on her for each resource generated by SPDR suit sync ratio ability used to pay for her. You're getting specs from vibes. Yeah, yeah, I think I think it's very similar to that. And I think the one thing that I didn't love about Spectrum is the fact that I didn't have full control over where or what form i was in whereas here i do and i think that's what's going to make this a little bit better so her her sync ratio so if you're exhausting a ton of these upgrades then she gets a much better um, stat line so probably minimum if you play her first thing she's going to have a two two three stat line which is pretty good and get all the way up to even higher We've got all systems go. So as a action ready, each interface upgrade you control. So this is great because you may have used them. You may have exhausted them to generate a resource, or you can search your deck and discard pile for an interface upgrade and add it to your hand. And this is one of those cards. You get three of these. This is one of those cards that does give me a little bit of, or ease my fears a little bit because my initial thought was, okay, if we only have a hand size of three and we need these interfaces, interface upgrades on the table in order for her to be generating the resources, in order for her, her to be, you know, uh, efficient, how are we going to find those if we're only going to be going through less than 10% of the deck each turn? And all system go helps with that. Rapid deployment. So remove three threat from a scheme. If you paid for this card using a resource generated by the sync ratio ability, remove three threat from a scheme. And so this is going to be a common theme is you're going to want to use the cards in your hand for the cards in their hand and not necessarily resources, which is a really cool, interesting design space, right? So we've seen heroes like Nova and like where they are built more around the resource cards that are in their deck. Nova wants a lot of wild resources where it feels like SPDR is really going to be wanting to build around the cards and not needing to worry too much about what resources are going in her deck. We have web trap. This is five damage. Um, and then if you use this with a SPDR suit, then you get to stun that enemy that you deal. So strong there. We have Aunt May and Uncle Ben making Aunt May making a reappearance here. So exhaust Aunt May and Uncle Ben and discard the top two cards of your deck, top three instead if you're in Alter Ego form, and add each SPDR card discarded this way to your hand. And so you can start to see the ways that she will be able to increase that hand size and find the critical cards that she needs to put onto the table. Ejection Protocol. So First appearance of Uncle Ben? Yeah, it is. First appearance of Uncle Ben right there. First appearance of Uncle Ben and second, I believe, of Aunt May. So, ejection protocol. So, discard ejection protocol. This is a support to exhaust each interface you control. Set your hit point dial to six. Give your identity a tough status card and flip to alter ego form. So, this is your bailout card. I really like it. It's kind of like a, um, like Cap has that, Drax has a similar vibe, but it's nice to be able to sit at zero um, 
and then kind of give yourself an out. SPDR command. This is a one cost support. So exhaust this um, and an interface upgrade to draw one card. So there's another way that she is getting more cards and then exhaust SPDR command and discard one card from your hand to ready an interface. So it kind of gives you a little bit of flexibility, which we all know and love. And then we're gonna get into some of our interface interface cards. So host spider. So this is a hero action to exhaust host spider to ready the SPDR suit, which again is your hero form. And so, or you can use this to exhaust for her sync ratio ability to generate a wild resource once it's on the table. Um, my, my concerns here is like, this is a three cost card. She has a hand size of three. Again, she has ways to mitigate or change that. But if like you draw this on your first turn, you want to get it onto the table. The SPDR suit is plus the two other cards in your hand is what's going to help you get there. I have said this a couple of times, but it's also, I have the hardest time just trying to understand how she fits in to Marvel Champions without actually playing her. She is so different than the mold that we have historically seen in Heroes. And it just feels like one of those that I'm not gonna understand exactly how good she is or how she plays until I sit her down and play on the table. This already looks complicated fast, but that's, uh, that's it's a spider suit, so not surprising, yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, it is I think probably one of the more complex heroes that we have seen. Um, it's I I've seen people uh, liken it to the closest we're ever going to get to an engine builder in Marvel Champions. If you know me, I love engine building games, and so I'm I'm really excited to try her out. Our next interface upgrade is the Psychic Link. So when a Spider Suit makes a basic thwart, exhaust Psychic Link, it gets plus two for that thwart. Spider Suit has a 2-2-2 two, two, two stat line, and so this becomes a four thwart very quickly, which is really crazy, really strong. This is gonna be something that's gonna be great to get out in a solo game when you are not playing justice, right? So if you can be playing something else and then have SPDR thwarting for four, it's gonna be it's gonna be hard to have threat be an issue. Next interface, and then this generates a mental resource. So your thwart card gen generates a mental resource, kind of what we would be expecting. Speed metal alloy. When an SPDR suit defends against an attack exhausted, it gets plus two, so that jumps up to a four defense which is awesome. I think that she's going to be excellent in protection. Her precon is protection, but also, right? So you have a base two defense, which is very usable for a, for a protection hero. You have plus two when you're defending. So you're up to four and then you have the, uh, which one is it? Oh crap. Uh, host spider, host spider readies. And so you get around the issue that is readying in protection. This generates a physical resource, which I would have ex expected it to generate a lightning resource, but here we are. The web fluid compressor, and this is the same thing, but for attack, whenever it makes a basic attack, it gets plus two. This generates the lightning resource. So really cool. So that that is the spider kit before we could dive into some of the aspect cards that come in the pack. And she looks very unique. <laughs> right i mean like i i don't know how else to say it but she looks super unique and, and i'm really excited for monday when i get to try her out let's go ahead and clean up some of these cards okay so I am super excited to see some new green cards. We've got Daredevil. Um, we've got Daredevil without a name, right? So this is a unique Daredevil without an alter ego name. And so I'm not quite sure what that means for the world of Marvel Champions, but it's a thing. So we get a two thwart, two cost protection ally, which is pretty rare, right? I don't actually know if we have any, any that follow the same stat line. Daredevil does take two consequentials with three health. And so 
There it is. Uh, after Daredevil defends against an attack, move one damage from him to the attacking enemy. And so, really, I love that we're starting to see some protection allies that really... This Daredevil feels more like a cosplayer outfit. Yeah, totally. It really does, doesn't it? That's funny. But yeah, we're starting to see a lot of protection and allies that are going to be able to take care of the minions. And so, right, it, with protection, you're going to be set up to take a lot of damage from villain attacks from just to your hero. But if you are swarmed with minions, that can be an issue. So Daredevil helps fix that. Our next ally is Spider-Man Noir with 3XX3, where X is equal to the number of face-down cards attached to Spider-Man Noir. So after you resolve a treachery, if you control another web warrior card, attach that treachery face down here to a maximum of three. So, which is really cool, especially because we have cards in the protection aspect. Ooh, Nora makes an entrance. It really does. And it looks sweet. I mean, like the art is amazing. I really hope, I really doubt, but I really hope that we will get a Noir hero at some point because I think that would be the only Spider-Man that made it into across the Spider-Verse, into the Spider-Verse movie that doesn't have a Marvel Champions hero now, right? Is Spider-Man Noir? Am I wrong on that? <laughs> but the uh, Web Warrior allies are getting pretty crazy. Now we're going to get into some cards that really make Iron Man a lot more interesting. And he's already really interesting, but we got Repurpose. So this is a beautiful card for anyone who wants to run tech upgrades. So Iron Man or Rocket or um, a lot of green has a lot of tech upgrades. So Repurpose says discard a tech upgrade you control. You can ready your hero and then choose fort attack or defense until the end of the round your hero gets plus x to the chosen power where x is equal to that upgrade's printed cost that is insane so what i'm envisioning this being is throwing these in here to kill off those like one energy barriers right so if you have energy barrier they come in with three charges Use two of them. You've used a lot of that value. You can then repurpose those as energy barriers, throw two thwart onto your hero. If you're running in green, you're probably going to be struggling with threat at some point. So if you throw a two thwart, it has an automatic ready in there. So you ready, and then you can thwart for minimum three. I guess if you're a Hulk, it'd be two, but right, it would be really good threat mitigation. Or you know, you can throw two on your attack and so now maybe you're you're swinging for five if you're hulk and so just really interesting opens up a lot of options rather than just using the card for its intended purposes all the way through i'm i'm really pumped about this i'm really pumped about this it's also a lightning resource so it makes this makes its way into my iron man deck somehow we got thwip thwip uh, this is a two cost event, which is we don't see a lot of two cost events, but it's a superpower, so we can def focus it. We got a hero action deal one damage to a web warrior character you control. This is one of the cards that make made me want to make sure I opened this pack before I played with Spider Ham. We'll get into that here in a second. But deal one damage to a web warrior character you control. Place a total of two stun status cards on up to two enemies. Solid solid so the way that i read that you could place two stun statuses on one enemy so it says place a total of two stun status cards on up to two enemies so if you had someone with steady then you could throw the way that i read that is you could just outright stun a steady character so that's kind of cool that's really cool i like i like that we got more energy barriers. We've seen these. What I'm most excited about now is because I've run these in a lot of my protection decks is I don't have to pull it out of the binder now. We have enough copies. We have force field generator, which is a really sweet card. Look at this. This is a three cost upgrade. This also probably makes it into the Iron Med deck somehow, some way. 
it comes in with six energy counters this has a max one per player and then forced interrupt so not a interrupt you are required to trigger this when the effect happens when you would take any amount of damage remove that many energy counters from here for each energy counter remove this way prevent one of that damage so it's effectively a plus six health this combined with repurpose is going to make a lot of fun plays right so energy barrier i was saying you know is a plus two with repurpose repurposing a force field generator is a plus three and i would say that the i would argue that force field generator is a weaker card than energy barrier i think with the upgraded cost it prevents six damage rather than the three damage but energy barrier does throw that back so it's a you know you take one damage you deal one damage or you prevent one damage you deal one damage whereas force field generator you're preventing that damage which is still really good but really the the main issue with this force field generator is the forced response you are required to not take that damage whereas energy barrier you can choose so and then i like the way the spider tingle um so when you would reveal an encounter card, deal one damage to a web warrior character you control. If that card is a treachery, cancel its win revealed effects and discard Spider Tingle. Another card that is going to be incredible for Spider Ham. I do like the, it's a little bit of a risk system here, right? Because you have to deal the damage before you reveal that card. And so you don't necessarily know if you're going to get to cancel it. You may just be taking some damage and your spider spider tingle is actually a hindrance, which I think is really cool. I think it's really cool. But um, so, yeah, it, it's just kind of fun, right? But and if it is a wind revealed treachery, then that can be critical, especially if you have someone else on the team, maybe like a spider woman um, or something like that that can take a look at that card or like Ironheart, right? Ironheart has a has a card that allows you to look at the top card of the encounter deck for the rest of the phase. Can really kind of play into this and you can make sure that you are utilizing this to full effect. Alrighty, we've got a Spider Ham, which is Peter Porker, a 3-2-2-3. Play only if you have a Web Warrior card under your control. After Spider-Man attacks or thwarts, discard the top, and also no consequentials. Uh, after he attacks or thwarts, discard the top card of the encounter deck. For each boost icon discarded this way, deal one damage to Spider-Ham. I am really looking forward. Oops, I am really looking forward to this with someone who can manipulate that. So like uh, uh, Scarlet Witch or someone like that. If she can somehow get a web warrior card into play and throw spider ham in there let's just see if we can just cancel all of that just sounds just sounds awesome we have auto octavius spider-man this is one of the one one of the more interesting cards i think in the spider kit so play only if you control a web warrior card after you play spider-man from your hand ready and upgrade you control if that upgrade has the tech trait draw one card Hey, it's Dr. Ock. I mean, Spider-Man. Totally not suspicious. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, right? The Spider-Verse is crazy, right? So, um, so yeah, yeah. So, um, so this is this is crazy. Um, ready and upgrade you control. So, that could be... I guess she doesn't have... Well, I guess it would have... Um, like, her interfaces work for this. I believe. So her interfaces work for this. And so she could, you could ready that, um, draw a card and then be able to use it again for its effect or its resource generation. I think, I believe it was trapped and if it's not, I, I apologize. But on the discord yesterday, we called out the combination of this with the web bracelets from Ghost Spider. And so, throw this into play, ready your web bracelets, and then be able to draw more cards. Really strong combo there. And then we're getting into the cards that are what I like to call how to fix Hulk. So limitless stamina, play only if your identity has at least 14 printed hit points, SPDR does. And we also have a couple more like Drax, we have Hulk, we have Thor, we have I'm sure there's more. I just don't recall them right now. Um, one cost event, superpower, which is, I believe. 
So Spider Tingle is a superpower. Limitless Stamina is a superpower. Invulnerability. She-Hulk. Yeah, thank you. Yep, good call. She-Hulk. Uh, Invulnerability is a superpower. Limitless Stamina is a superpower. So we're starting to get off hero cards that are superpower traded, which really opens up a depth focus a little bit, makes that way easier to play. And so I'm excited to see those because we really haven't seen that many. I believe it's just those three at this point. We may see some more in uh, Spider Hands pack, but I believe we just have three. Um, and Hulk already wants to have focus in his pack. And so getting that, hey, there's another uh, basic superpower. Speaking of fixing Hulk, we got Unshakable. Uh, one cost upgrade. Again, it's a superpower. So Death Focus loves it. Uh, your identity gains steady. And so you require two status card to stun or confuse, which is one of Hulk's biggest weaknesses, right? If he is stunned, you have a bad time with Hulk. So this helps fix that. So I'm happy about that. It's also a physical resource. Limitless stamina is also a physical resource. So I don't understand, or I don't see a situation where I'm not probably running three copies of Limitless stamina and maybe one or two of Unshakable and my Hulk decks. We've got the obligations and everything. And so we got Morbius. Um, we've got a uh, giant monster attack, some of the obligations. And so those are going to be going here and we'll hopefully draw shadows to see that on Monday. Let's talk about one of the more controversial cards that we've seen recently. So this is clarity of purpose. So clarity of purpose is a card. I don't understand why I would never put this in any of my blue decks going forward. I will probably run at least one, probably two. And if I'm running multiplayer, three of these cards in every blue deck I have going forward. It just seems so very good. So attached to a friendly character that can be an ally, that can be another player, that can be your hero. And then you can exhaust this card and deal one damage to the attached character, generate a wild resource. My thought is, is that one damage for one wild resource is one of the greatest trades of all time. It does have an upgrade cost of one. And so we are, you know, it takes two uses to pay for itself. But then after that, it, it's just insane, right? So if you throw this on Hulk, if you throw this on She-Hulk, like She-Hulk loves this card, right? Because she wants to be taking damage because then you get your gamma slams out earlier. So, and she has the hand size of four. Yeah, Asian Venom, the upgrade. I love it. Yes, absolutely. It's a beautiful, yeah. I'll just like Sharpie out. Asian Venom, the upgrade right here. But, and it's not, it's not a requirement. So if you are hurting for hit points, you get down to three, four hit points. You don't care. You don't have to use it, right? It just sits on the table. You can toss it with a caught off guard. This card seems so good. I just, I, I don't under, I, I think it's too good. I think it is too good. Um, yep. And then we have, uh, Iron Spider Sinister Six, which is a new modular set. This modular set does look pretty insane. We got Sandman Spot, uh, Iron Spider, Hobgoblin, Electro, Bombshell, Grand Larceny, and uh, Surgeon Crime. This does seem pretty strong. I think Spider Ham is going to be one of the strongest villains. Your power creep senses are tingling. Yes, absolutely. Right? Like, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. It, it's it's something. It's something, but, um, but yep. So, uh, the, yeah, so th this is a pretty strong, uh, modular set, pretty minion heavy. And so what we'll do is because I think Spider-Man is going to be one of the stronger heroes in the game, we are going to run this probably against an aggression because I, I do want to see this. I want to get it to the table. So we will set that aside. That will be one of our games today so i'm going to do this where i take one card for the binder nope we don't need energy barrier we've already seen that one card from each stack to go into the binder we'll fix the binder here in a second i do want to fix the binder before i start building my deck or else that it just goes my uh everything goes crazy i can't think it's insane 
A, B, C, D, E, F, G, L, Q, R, S, T, U. There we go. Okay. Alrighty, let's uh let's look at Spider Ham. I guess like so, Maddie, what are your thoughts on or chat? What are your thoughts on just kind of the aspect cards that you saw with with SPDR? Also check this mug out. It's like my wife's mug. It's a owl. I think it's hilarious and adorable. And carries a significant amount of coffee. All right, we're gonna dive into spider ham. This is, okay, so a lot of people are, I don't know if upset or, I, I don't even know. I think this spider ham pack is awesome. I think it's fun. I think it's really, like, he seems very, very, very strong. And I, I'm just really excited for this hero. I just think it's, a, it's, I mean, we play this game to have fun and I think that spider ham is just a fun. Jury is out on the on the cards. We got the I feel like this needs to go on like my front door, right? Like I can frame it and just stick it on my front door. I think that kind of show, tells everyone what type of household they are entering. Spider ham. Oh, I'm so pumped. I'm so excited. This this this, this pack is hilarious to me. I did play with Step Into the Portal last Wednesday where he ran through Spider Ham. Spider Ham comes with a pre-con of Justice with some really interesting Justice cards. And so I'm excited to dive into those. And Spider Ham is what I would describe as bonkers good. And so excited about that. So Spider Ham in his hero form has a 2-1-1 stat line he has a five hand size and 12 hit points he has a ability that says tune counters can be spent as if it were a wild resource on him and spider nonsense so after spider ham takes any amount of damage place one tune counter on him so i think i think it was tony tails that I called him spider bank and i think that's hilarious just because of how much money he has in his alter ego size he has a recovery of five which is really crazy and then after you make a basic recovery place one tune counter on peter porker he has a hand size of six what i like about this is that we're starting to see um heroes or cards that benefit you making that basic recovery yeah the game is giving out wild resources like candy <laughs> that's very true that is very very true yep um I do love this this art where it's like Spider Ham, Peter Porker, and then Spider Ham in the window. I think that's hilarious. The I do like that we're seeing more reasons to use a basic recovery just because recovery is a very under underutilized stat in this game. And so you know, rewarding your basic recovery with giving you wild resources or tomb counters, I think is a really smart design space. Alrighty, so we have a Captain America. So after Captain America cat enters play, give someone a high five. Let's go. Then place one to encounter on your identity and shuffle one Spider Ham card from your discard pile into your deck. So even though it's a three cost card, which is a two two three, which is really good, like still standard hero stuff, you do get that extra resource, and so it's effectively a two cost card, is the way that I'm looking at it. We've got ham it up. This is a zero cost thwart event. Remove one threat from each scheme, from a scheme for each tune counter on spider ham. So right there, we've already got a zero cost for probably minimum two, probably up to five or so is what I've heard. So ham it up, you get two copies of those. We've got hog washed. So remove one tune counter from spider ham. Loudly read, loudly read this card's flavor text. Choose to either deal five damage to a minion or remove five threat from a scheme. Pow, bam, whack, smack, boink. And so there we go. That's hogwash. This is his, um, he only has one copy of this. And so this helps get rid of those side schemes or deal with those bigger minions. I don't think so. So 
when you reveal a two when you reveal a card from the encounter deck remove one two encounter from spider ham say i don't think so in your best spider ham voice cancel the effects of that card and discard it you got one of those and what i like about this is that you're they're rewarding the tune counters they're not just wild resources so you do have some decision points to make on if you want to spend them for the wild resource or if you are going to uh use them for your cards and that that's what i'm saying like this clarity of purpose right so spider ham is after you take any amount of damage place one tune counter on him which is why clarity of purpose is dumb with him right so you deal a damage generate a wild resource then you get a tune counter which is a wild resource right it's two wild resources. It pays for itself on its first activation. Spider Ham has a five recovery. I don't, he's going to be taking some damage. It, it, yeah, I, I just, that's going to be a fun interaction. Our next event is Petulant Pig. Stick your tongue out at the villain. The villain attacks you, draw three cards. We get two of those. This is, this is a really good card, especially because Peter Port or Spider Ham does want to be taking damage. And you get cards from it. Swinging web pig. Deal six damage to an enemy and confuse that enemy. So it's very much like a swinging web kick, except I would consider way better because you got the confuse. Spider hand wants to be rolling down. Having confuse built into the deck is really strong. The other reason you want to be flipping down is the daily beagle. Exhaust the Daily Beagle, place one tomb counter on Peter Porker. And so when you're rolling down, assuming you're going to be doing one basic recovery with the Daily Beagle, every trip to home gives you at least three tomb counters, one for the recovery, one for Daily Beagle, and then one for Daily Beagle the next turn. So that's three wild resources. You can throw Captain America into play right then. It's, it's just crazy. We've got Cartoon Physics. This is a superpower. The other thing that I meant to mention is that every single one of his cards has cartoon. Is cartoon traded? And he's also cartoon traded. And so we are going to be running team building exercise in every single one of our decks. Probably two copies of it. Because, yeah. Because team building exercise, you exhaust to play the next card that shares a trait with your hero for a reduced cost of one. That applies to everything he has. <laughs> so it's just really good. I think actually we, we get some reprints. Cartoon Physics is a when your identity would take any amount of damage, discard this card, wiggle your body, and prevent all but one of that damage. This is better than stunned. I think this was said on Brant's stream. Because if you have... Or better than tough, I'm sorry. Because if you have tough... You don't get to activate a spider nonsense ability. Cartoon physics allows you to activate that at the low cost of one health. He has 12 health and again, a five recovery. So it's going to be fine. Then we got his two upgrades. We've got a huge wooden hammer. So he gets plus one attack, raising him to a two attack. And then when spider ham makes a basic attack, exhaust this wooden hammer, remove one tune counter from spider ham. He gets plus two from that attack and it gets overkill. And then organic webbing, he gets plus one thwart, raising him to a three thwart character, which is really crazy. And then exhaust organic webbing and remove one tomb counter from spider ham. Ready spider ham, he gains aerial trait until the end of the phase. Every identity card is a one of. A lot of them are. We got cartoon physics is a two of. Swinging web pig is a three of. Petulant pig is a two of. Hamming it up is a two of. And everything else is a one of. Yep. So organic webbing getting a ready is for one one resource, right? So at both of these, you have to remove a tune counter. The opportunity cost for removing a tune counter is a wild resource. So it is not just a free ready, but it is a one cost readily available ready, right? I use ready a lot there, but we get to ready up spider ham. And with his thwart being at three, at that point for one cost, you can thwart for six off of two basic activations and a tune counter. And so it's, he's really strong. He's, he's really, really strong. This is who we are going to be playing today. And so we'll get him sleeved up and built here in a second, but we got some more cards to go through. So spider ham.
Like I said, he comes with a Justice Precon. We got some more Web Warrior cards. We got Lady Spider. So this is a four cost two two with two consequentials and a four health. So after Lady Spider thwarts and removes threat from a scheme, if you control another Web Warrior card, remove an equal amount of threat from a different scheme. So two thwart and insane economy is a hell of a fit. Nova has one thwart, right? Right? Isn't yeah? It's just yep. I think it was Josh that was saying that because a lot of people have been turned off by Spider-Ham's theme, they did kind of up his power level just a little bit, just a little bit, probably they, they, they turned that dial probably a little bit too much, but <laughs> I mean, like, I'm fine with that. Uh, just, to, um, kind of, you know, benefit him a little bit. And the nice thing about, you know, these cooperative games is if you don't want to, you don't have to play them, but. I, I think, you know, having overpowered heroes and underpowered heroes is just a fact of the game and it's fine. I think that's fine. So, so Lady Spider, thought I was going to sneeze there. We got Spider-Man, uh, Pavir Verbakutter, I'm sorry about the pronunciation there. Um, one, one, three stat line. And after Spider-Man enters play, remove one threat from a scheme. For each web warrior card you control, including Spider-Man. So probably a minimum of two threat from a scheme, which is which is really great. We have even the odds. So this has a requirement of a lightning resource while paying for this card. Yep. Yeah. Uh remove one per player threat from each side scheme. Deal one damage to the villain for each side scheme defeated this way. This is a card I don't think I'm necessarily gonna be running. And solo play, it's a two cost card, which is really expensive. It would just be really, really situational in order to utilize it to its full benefit. And so it's probably a more like three to four player uh, card to be removing six to, you know, nine, eight to 12 threat. And it just makes it a lot more playable because also when with higher player counts, you're going to be seeing more side schemes. So. I think even the odds probably is a higher player count include. Great responsibility, which is kind of interesting. This is actually a a card that we have seen before, but it's it's only a two of in the in the precon. I don't know if we've ever actually seen that before, where a card that you could have three copies in one deck and the precon only has two. Interesting. This card is phenomenal in Spider Ham. So when any amount of threat will be placed on a scheme, you take it as damage instead. He gets a wild resource for that excellent card. And one of the things that we were talking about on our stream on Wednesday is how the designers are doing a great job of pulling in cards that we had kind of discarded and not really been playing at all, right? Like surveillance team. They fixed that with Monica Chang. Great responsibility. Spider Ham loves it. We get a lot of these cards like expert defense that we weren't really playing a lot of, but now we are with Ghost Spider. And so I'm really enjoying the design that this game is moving towards with all of that. And so it's just really cool. Making an entrance is another reprint. It's if you remove the last uh, threat, you get to heal damage one way or another. Excellent card. This is, this is one of the issues that Steve beat the game had is that we have a lot of reprints in this pack. So we got followed, which is another reprint. And probably my guess is that they knew that this was probably not going to be a high seller for them. So they didn't want to include a ton of aspect cards, but still it does feel kind of bad to see one, two, three, four reprints. We've got Overwatch, which is a beautiful card. I love this card. One, the art, and also two, the ability. I I just love that art. I don't know what it is about it. I love Spider-Man, but... Okay, so... Attached to a scheme. When any amount of threat is removed from the attached scheme by a thwart, discard this card and remove an equal amount of threat from a different scheme. So... This goes into the one way or another builds. This goes into the high threat or high thwart heroes, like a group that doesn't have 
they have one card that does a lot of threat removal and sometimes you have to play the game of where do you want that threat removal to go overwatching Groot's deck looks awesome right because you can hit the main and aside clear it out um, it also like if you throw it on the main this gets around some of those requirements of only targeting the main with like impede right so you remove three threat i believe with impede but it has to be the main scheme if overwatch is attached uh, to the main scheme you can then trigger overwatch and pull it off a side scheme just a lot of flexibility with this card i'm really excited to see this i think that this is a, a really well designed card and i'm excited to see this act go in some decks we've got scarlet spider so this is a web warrior play only if you control a web warrior card it's a four cost basic one two four and then when you would reveal an encounter card name a card type and then look at the card if that card is of the name type deal one damage to scarlet spider and draw a card so I think fairly situational overwatch not to be confused of the game with the same name yep <laughs> yep I think spider or scarlet spider is interesting situational you have to be pretty sure at what that top card is I think in order to use it well, could pay for could pay for himself himself yeah, Kane himself um, could pay for himself. And then if you're running like leadership or you throw additional health on him or heal him, then he can overpay for himself. But you have to be consistent. And so either, you know, that's running a Falcon alongside of him. So you get to see the top card or I don't know. It, 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 he seems tricky, but I feel like there's an archetype forming with scrying that we were starting to build into it. I don't know if it's quite there yet, but Josh, get up in game, is gonna love this card, he loves that. We got SPDR, Spider. It's a two cost, two thwart, one attack, Web Warrior. Only if you control a Web Warrior card. And when defeated, if uh, she was defeated by taking excess consequential damage, you can return her to your hand. Love it. Pairs beautifully with Web and Life and Destiny. Which anytime a web warrior card leaves play, draw a card. I think that's a really cool design. Yep. Okay. So here we go. We got team building exercises. We got three copies of those. That's another reprint, right? So we got one, two, three, four, five cards that were reprinted. Web and Life of Destiny is a six card that was reprinted. However, I'm less ups upset, right? As upset as I can be. I, th I think that's a that's a harsh word to use here but less upset about that because it is a a one of and i right so it's nice to have extra copies of one of cards so we got the obligation we got the green gobbler we got some of their or his bad cards we're gonna put those there we got warriors of the great web this is a one cost basic upgrade attach the attached character with spider in its title, max one per cater character. The attached character gains the web warrior trait. Then after a web warrior ally lose play, attached character gets plus one attack until the end of the phase. This card has some controversy surrounding it. So this is the fix of, you know, giving spider woman or spider man, Peter Parker, the web warrior trait, which then allows him to play a lot of these cards that you know, require a web warrior card to be played. The problem is, is if it's your 40th card, if it's the last card in your deck, then there are so many dead cards above it. It's one of these cards that I will play. I will try it because it's, it's, I'm one of the don't knock it until you try it type players because it, it may be good, but I think you probably should be running more than one copy just so if, if your deck revolves around it, right? If your deck revolves around it, then that helps. So it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting, but it is a way to get Spider-Man and or Spider-Woman that web warrior trait. I think that's, that's all of those, but I guess those are the heroes. There, there are other allies and everything that it can be attached to. But, and then we have got one of the more nasty modular sets that we've seen. This is the Inheritors, which has some major 
uh, <laughs> minions in it. I think each one of these, um, you know, these all have one revealed if web warriors are in play. And then based on which ones are out there, the inheritors then get different benefits. So this one says like each inheritor minion gains one acceleration icon. This one says each inheritor minion gains patrol. And so some nasty things start to happen whenever whenever we have any of these out there. I really wish they weren't afraid to add setup cards in situations like this. I totally agree with you. Hey, how's it going? Good morning. Um, I do. I, I, I agree with you there. I absolutely agree with you there. I think they would need to figure out how to be careful with the cost of those cards or how they would work. But I, I, I agree with you. Maybe it, it's like it doesn't count towards your your deck size or something like that because that that is probably one of the stronger reasons is that we have a you know a deck limit of 40 cards if this card's in your deck then i don't necessarily want it to count towards your deck size just because that feels really strong but with that being said if they did something like it's set up put this card into play at the start of the game draw two less cards or something like that then i think you know that that gets a lot easier to play and then maybe it's like this does not count towards the deck minimum which i think we've seen some lord of the ring cards like that and so i don't think we're it'd be unprecedented to see that i had to get one of this shiny sleeves got a shiny sleeve for spider ham no nope, wrong one shiny sleeve shiny sleeve so but i i totally agree with you that i i hope that we get to see some setup cards in the future that help with that but or or cards that are able to tutor title cards or something like that i think that that is too that is too good especially with that plus one attack buff from the start that's true yeah i think if they if they had this as a setup keyword or something like that that response would not be on it right so we wouldn't see a plus one attack but that is a nice benefit right so at that point if you're running warrior of the great web you're running across the spider verse um no no uh web of life and destiny it's right in front of me it's like right in front of me um then then i mean you do get a lot of benefits for the spider-man's entering and leaving play especially with like spdr right then you can throw it right back into play so i think that there's a fun archetype there and i'm excited to see what that is the other thing is you don't have to run this in spider-man or spider-woman you can run this in spider ham right this can be in there so you can throw this off and now it's a one cost event to give you plus one attack whenever someone leaves play so i mean that that's not bad that's not bad fodder hey how's it going welcome to the chat you played through with spdr versus rhino one time yesterday she's fun but my only thing is why not make the hero and alter one card and just have the second card be permanent that has a hero and alter action it seems like clunky way and it's practice although it's thematic yeah I can't think of a reason, like just a forced response whenever you flip flip this card. So that yeah, that makes sense to me. Like I don't know why they would why they would necessarily do that, but um Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Maddie, you have to be really selective with setup cards. Arkham has those that range from useful to game breaking. Okay, so I guess like the, the good thing is is that we do have precedent of setup cards in some of the other lcgs and so i'm excited about that and the potential that we have um there if it was set up i'd be assuming it would just be a title card so no extra attack yeah yeah i think that would be the the, the way to fix that there okay so i'm gonna just be sleeving for a little bit who should I play? So I I like to kind of keep it within a, a standard set of villains that don't change the game too much so that we can really kind of highlight the heroes. 
I was thinking that we would run against mutagen. Does that sound? I, th I feel like mutagen formula would be kind of cool. Um, against Peter Porker. I think mutagen is one of the claw. You think claw? Okay, we can go claw. Let's do claw. Claw is always fun to take on. Okay, so I'm going to take one of each of these. My headcanon is that Spider-Man abandoned the Web Warrior Church. He built more power to him. Yeah, right? <laughs> no, we don't need this. We don't need this. I don't know why I took. I don't need a followed. I don't need a one way or another. I don't need a making an entrance. I don't need a great responsibility. I don't need half of these cards to throw into the binder. The claw always gives me more trouble than I think he's going to. Claw is tricky. Claw is tricky because of that. You don't. You don't always know how much damage you're going to take, and that can be kind of scary. But, yeah, so we'll run against Claw. We got SPDR here. We need two shiny sleeves for SPDR. Go shiny on that side. Ooh. Also, I got, I got the sleeves from... Um, from beat to game, Steve beat to game. I think he has a way to buy them, but I would feel bad if he doesn't, but okay. So we're going to run Peter Porker in justice first, just because that is his setup. That is his pre con. So I want to run him in justice. So with claw, someone give me a modular set. I want to run, I'm going to run the inheritors um against a aggression build no i'm gonna run the inheritors against a uh leadership build and then a spot or i'm sorry an iron spiders sinister six against an aggression build so that's the uh that's what i plan on doing but what about <laughs>